Well, another round of severe weather hitting the Dakotas over the weekend. The storms hit South Dakota Saturday night in the northeastern part of the state. Farm journalist Michelle Rook had boots on the ground to see the aftermath. Four tornadoes reported in an area ranging from EF1 to EF3. But the peak winds reached 165 miles per hour and also brought excessive rain. Areas hit by tornadoes also seen over 10 inches of rain causing flash flooding, which you see there. USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey joining us now with weather. Brad, I cannot believe the number of cornfields now at Tassel around our area. I mean, happening before the 4th of July this year, I'm hearing the same in Iowa. This corn crop is really far along. Yeah, there was a lot of early planting this, this year, so no surprise. Here we are coming into July, and we've got about a fifth of the crop already moving into silking in the southern Corn Belt, just getting started in the north, but that means it is showtime. Not only do we have fireworks going on in the sky, but we've got fireworks going on in the cornfields because we've got showtime. It is time to get this crop through reproduction. Corn gets one chance, and here we go. If we can keep the heat down and keep the moisture coming, this should be a really strong corn crop for the U.S. pretty much across the board. And as these numbers continue to move northward in the next few weeks, we'll be watching that weather. Yeah, let's talk about soil moisture in the ground as we head into this key stage. Is there enough soil moisture in a lot of these key production areas? Our summer crops get moisture from the sky, but also from dew and very importantly from soil moisture. We're coming off a very wet June for just about everybody east of the Rockies. Yes, I know there's a couple of exceptions, northern North Dakota being one of them. But look at that moisture east of the Rockies, just about everybody seeing at or above normal rainfall. That means this corn crop and the soybeans and has moved to the south. Other crops are going to be able to extract a lot of soil moisture from this profile. So even if it dries out a little bit, we get a few dry patches. We've got a lot of moisture on standby, on reserve, that these crops can extract as we move through the critical month of July. Yeah, let's switch our focus to July. July typically brings the heat. I mean, Brad, it's summer. But what is the outlook this year in terms of precipitation and temperatures for July? Well, let's start off with the temperatures. And it looks like a broad brush of above normal temperatures. That looks a little scary. But remember the fact that if we can just keep this as a consistent warmth, as opposed to significant heat waves, we can get these crops through without a lot of significant heat stress. Also notable that the middle part of the country has lower odds of those above normal temperatures. I'd be more concerned with the extreme heat in the Northwest, maybe in parts of the Northeast. But once again, if we can just keep that consistent heat as opposed to heat waves, that bodes well for our corn and our soybeans. Moving to the precipitation outlook for July, we will be watching some patchy dryness that could start to develop across parts of the plains, western Corn Belt, but I'm more concerned with the dryness that's across the northern high plains and the northwest. We've already seen crop impacts in Montana. We're starting to see them in the northwest for some of the dryland crops. So that's, I think, the more critical area in July will be the northwestern crops. Brad, real quick, seasonal drought outlook. I mean, we were talking about drought here, talking about those pockets of dryness. Do you think that expands as we head really through September? Yeah, this seasonal drought outlook takes us all the way through the end of the growing season. Focus on the West and the fact that where drought is already present, we expect it to continue. We could see some drought development in parts of California, the Northwest and the Northern High Plains. That's the hot spot, I think, for this summer. Obviously, that's not in the heart of the Midwest. Monsoon looks good in the Southwest and notice that pretty much the entire Eastern half of the country drought free as we move to the end of summer. All right, Brad Rippey, USDA meteorologist. Thanks for joining us this weekend. Well, a major trade deal was announced this week by the Trump administration, came as a bit of a surprise. Is that the fireworks that this market needs right now?